Now someone asked me, how do you aim a golf ball? Now on the tee box, what you can do is you can find like old pitch marks, old tees, pieces of grass. See, these kind of things. Someone leaves their broken tee. You're allowed to use anything that's already there. You can't place anything down, but you can put your ball in line with where you want to hit it, an intermediary target between your ball and the target, which is no more than a couple feet away. So there's a little piece of turf that's left here. I tear it up behind it along the line that I want to hit down, which is down the middle of the fairway. That's how you aim a shot, every single shot. I'll show you the rest of the hole. Probably about 15% of the ball is below the rough, so it's a bit tricky, but I think it may have a bit of a flyer. So 139, I'm going to hit the 99 so it'll land on the green and bounce up maybe four or five yards. I think that's going to be enough club here. We don't want to be greedy and take a pitching wedge, but uh, an 8 iron I think would be too much and probably catch a flyer and go over the back. Yeah, plays a long green. I knew it was at the back. I mean, it's a blue pin. Really didn't think I was going to smash it that far, but it came out really hot. So we had this whole green here to work with. And I could have put it on there, on the middle here, with a pitching wedge, I guess. I've flown it, and now I'm short-sided. Not much green to work with from the rough, from below the green. Let's see what we can do. Don't give up. You don't score until you score. Having a bit of trouble reading this one. Let's see that thing the pros do where they stand with their foot either side of the hole. I can feel pressure on the left foot, which would mean that from that side it would come in from the right. It looks straight to me, but I'm gonna try outside the right because I can't read it, but at the hole it tells me it's, it's gonna be right to left. Let's see. So players, it's the same thing when you're putting and chipping. You can just find your target line, find something a foot or a centimeter or an inch or five inches or six inches in front of the ball that is on your target line or on your, the line you want to hit the ball. You can do this with putting and chipping. It's really helpful with putting, especially if there's blemishes on the greens. On these paspalum grass greens in the tropics, there's not so many, so it's difficult. But on bent grass greens where you probably are, there's still blemishes from pitch marks. Maybe they've caught the greens like here and there's holes to aim to. Just aim to something within six inches or a foot of the ball and turn every shot into a one foot or less shot and then just worry about the pace. That's how you aim your club face for every shot. Putting, chipping, long shots, irons, everything. I promise it works 100%. With this hole, the, the green is shaped that way, diagonally from us. So I would like to approach it from the left-hand side, more, that, more so than the right. So if I just hit it up the left side of the fairway there with a five iron from 330, I should leave myself a nice wedge into the green and we're laughing. Maybe we can stick it close and get a birdie. That's perfect, players. That's perfect. So we've set ourselves up the third shot. It was always going to be a, a three shot hole, about 590 yards, I believe. So easy life. May have miscalculated there at 330 to the hole. Um, 84 yards left. That's telling me that's a 250 yard five iron. Not too sure about that. So maybe I was a bit closer to the hole there. Got 84 yards. Yeah, remember, no more smashing of the clubs. We're going to take the 54 and hit a little three-quarter shot, stick it to three feet and tap it in. Because why hit the wedges hard? The addition of loft is meant to help you hit shorter shots. Why hit those shots hard? It doesn't make any sense. Plus, I don't believe my 58 degree is suitable for uh, tropical conditions. I think there's, it's too sharp with too much grind on the bottom. So I'm going to get a new one. But I'm trying the 54 here. It's a shot I like at the moment. Let's get it close. Wow! 
Wow, wow, wow. So you see the big difference is, look how I just bruised the turf. Do you remember in previous videos, maybe you, you knew around here, but if you go check my old videos, that would have been a, this 58 degree that digs into the ground and takes a huge gaping hole over the, the earth and leave me sore. Just bruised the turf there. Wow, 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 look at that. That was unheard of last year or before the lockdown. I was just hitting that 58 degree, which I didn't really like. And this is starting to become more of the results I'm getting, which is amazing. It's like not even two feet from the hole. Super happy with that, players. Let's use control this year and not brute force. It's only 189 on this hole. Also another toughy, little dog leg kind of looking par three. Always plays with your mind. Some bunkers that get that get more within reach the longer left you go. So the further left you go, the more you have to carry. Now I want to go dead at this pin. I wanted to use the six iron, but there's a slight breeze into me. And let's play the control shot, players. Let's not get out of hand. Let's keep the pain away. Let's keep stress free. Five iron, 189. Not a good shot, players, a bit way left. Um, kind of like, let's see what happens if I took the six iron, you know? You've got to commit to the shot. Not 100% committed. I'm trying to commit to these uh, less power shot, but let's try the six iron and see if it makes a difference. Can't really judge, a bit of a poor strike near the toe of the club, but let's go deal with the situation. Whatever happens after a shot, we're just gonna deal with the consequences. That's golf, no, no whining, no moaning. We're on the golf course, it's a pleasure. You've hit a bad shot. If you get angry too much with it, probably something else in life you wanna sort out. Blue pin means back pin, so it's 127 again. So I'm gonna hit the 50 degree because I wanna stay short of the back. I don't wanna go over the back with a pitching wedge and have another short sided chip. I've been over the back of this green the other day, not an easy chip at all. So let's keep it short of the pin, put it in the hole for Birdski. Not my best shot, probably a little bit, maybe steepish. Maybe trying to power it too hard, no need for that. Missed it a bit on the right, I think, but we'll get up and down. But he has a case of the old swing, hurting the right side by coming in too steep again, trying to muscle the ball. There was no need for it. A normal, simple shot would get us 120 easily. Chill out. Well, that worked out differently than I thought. All the way on the front, not a problem. I thought I'd come up here on the right, but not a great strike, too steep. Pop the ball up in the air. You learn as you go, players. But now, we've got this long putt. All we need is a two putt ski here. Well, 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 here we are, old chaps. Try not to fall in. Okay, there we go. Probably went in about here, two club lengths up. Oh boy, what a drop. So here's the other one. We did the ball below the feet now. On, a lot on this course, you're gonna get these kind of ball above the feet lies. This is quite severe, check it out. 
Now, since the ball is closer to us, we have to grip down on the club. But then when we grip down on the club, we're going to lose some distance, right? So I clubbed up one here. This is 120 yards. I've taken a pitching wedge. So I'm going to grip down, club up, and I'm going to swing with the slope. I'm not going to fight it and try hit a fade or something. It's impossible from this. Look, it's like a, that ball is like probably two feet above my feet. So we want to aim very far right. I'm probably going to aim this one at the, the tallest palm tree, probably right of that, because this thing should come out right to left big time. Most of the, mostly these lies will do that. So we want to swing with the, with the, the slope. Don't, don't fight the slope, okay? That ball's going to go nowhere. As soon as you dig, dig in, it's going nowhere. Just sweep it off. Ooh. And just let it move right to left. Don't fight it. See, look at that. That's like gone. Well, maybe a bit too optimistic. Pitched in the bunker and rolled down to the center. At least we dry. Let's, let's put it close. Bunkers are my baby. So we're going to take the yellow Inesis ball now and we're going to test this little voice caddy, this uh, SC300, see what it's like here on the course. And then we'll shoot back to these palm trees and see how accurate it is. Okay, so the SC300 is telling me it's 281. 114 swing speed, ball speed 164. Let's go have a look. We can shoot it back. I've picked out a couple of landmarks here and let's see if it's correct. I hit that quite nicely. So here's the yellow ball. Now the tea is back there. There's a couple palm trees in the distance. Let's see if you can see that. Just over here somewhere. Over there. I'm going to shoot back to those and let's see what the distance is. So players, it says 275. So I'm at, to, I'm at to about 275 here. I would predict that this landed about 8 yards back. So it's probably about 268. That thing's saying 282. Not a bad little difference, you know, obviously it depends on the wind conditions. We had a bit of breeze into me here. It depends on the ball type, but I mean, that's close enough. Over a 20 shot period, you're going to notice a great average of your, of your distances, which makes this thing a valuable tool. Nice drive. Okay, 
like a little bit of a slice. So we're still in play. Kind of what I was going for, I didn't want to hook it left or end up in that bunker. So I was kind of going for the right side of the green with a draw, but double crossed myself, sliced it, and we still opened up the green. Easy life. Always be planting players, planting feathers, growing birdies. I just don't think that the drive is the correct play here. I could get it up there, but I'm not too sure where it comes in from the water. And we've got water all down the right. I just need a draw shot with a hybrid down there, 240-ish, 230-ish, and I've got a shot into the green. I'd rather just have that in, be sure of it, than stand here crapping myself with a driver. Maybe held on to it a little bit, so I'll pull it a bit. <laughs> okay, I can see it. Maybe the better play. <laughs> Not too bad players on the top of a hill, giving us a nice launching pad to encourage the draw to the back left pin over here. I can't complain. Yep, we've got 169 into the hole. From this launching pad, slight upslope, slight draw lie, 169. We've got to commit to an eight iron, get it there. Just gonna aim this at the right of the green and let it draw in. So if it goes straight, I'm on the green, and if it hooks, it's gonna be close to the pin. Well, that is absolutely shocking. I went too hard at it. The only really bad swing of the day because I could feel it here. <sighs> what a day. Way left of the green. It's a tough up and down, but I got the goods. Uh, not my sharpest shot. Uh, I've pulled it into a very short-sided position. Now, short-siding is when I've got all this, this ground to carry here onto a dome where the, where the pin is. The pin is on a dome. And there's not much green to work with and the ball is sitting down in the rough which is not easy from this stuff it gobbles your club so i'm not going to go with a 58 there's not enough meat behind the sole i'm going to go with a 54 and then let's get around the green i mean we can always make a putt i suppose i could chip in but it's going to be very difficult to chip in from below the green there if i leave it short so let's make sure we get around the green not an easy shot you can probably only see you can see the top half of the ball but Realistically, 15% of the ball, 20% of the ball is above the grass. So, priority number one, get on the green. Okay, quite a nice shot. Uh, really, it, out of this rough, it can squirt anywhere. I squirted left. It could have just as easily gone right. Had a bit of backspin on surprisingly, but we're on there. I don't know what that is, probably eight feet, nine feet for the pass key. Players, this putt may or may not go in. My score may or may not be good. I know I've made a couple birdies. I've made a few bogeys and some pars. But at the end of the day, once I'm done with this, I'm gonna go see my dad. You know, luckily I've set my life up in a way that I can play golf midweek. I mean, I work hard, I've often is the last couple of years not sleeping much. So this year I'll try to wind things down a little bit, move to Malaysia where it's a bit quieter, less stressful. Um, Bangkok was driving me a bit nuts and then you add that on top of work stress and uh, eventually you're walking around like a ticking time bomb. So I've changed the lifestyle, um, moved down here. Once I'm done with this, I'm gonna go see my dad who lives down here now. Uh, we're gonna go have a bit of, bit of lunch. And then I'm back to the grindstone, go work a little bit and um, try and make some videos for you players in the, in the spare time. But at the end of it, I mean, look at this. On your deathbed, 
Do you think you're going to talk about how much more time you should have spent at work? Or how much more time you should have spent playing golf, spending time with your family? What a life, players.